Couldn't tell you why. My stream deck just died. I don't know why this thing always dies on me. Like every time I try to do something, it just says, nope, LOL, JK. So let me see if I can see. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it just gives me an error. I guess I'll figure that out afterwards. Good morning, good evening, hello everybody. So Brian Stewart is doing his live stream on Friday, don't forget. So it's the vendor agnostic protocols training. Um, he and I had a big, huge fight this morning. He said his stream was better. I said my stream was better. And then he just disappeared and went offline. And I'm just kidding. He's here. He's having some power issues at home, but um, he will be doing that Friday. So, you know, it was a great session last week. We only had one instance of uh, Murphy's live stream law, <laughs> which tends to happen in that environment. Um, but it went great. So again, he'll be there Friday. So please join. Um, don't forget tomorrow at one o'clock Pacific. That's really hard for me to say because I live in, in the mountain time zone, but uh, one o'clock Pacific will be streaming on Twitch and I'm actually gonna put that Twitch channel in chat so you can see it. Uh, so go give us a follow there. We're gonna do Ruckus at Home. So I'm gonna cover Unleashed. Uh, we're gonna cover the ICX 7150. We're gonna go through a lot of that stuff. I know that content gets a lot of a lot of hits on YouTube, and I think there's a lot of uh, people that need that information, so we're gonna do that. As we do it over time, I'm gonna do, I have a Intel Nook on its way and some storage. So I'm gonna do an unboxing on that, put it together, and we'll start to build out some of the things that we're gonna use through the stream, but these are things that you can do at home. They're pretty fun, pretty easy. Uh, but as we go on and we do this, I'll bring an Apple TV in and we'll connect the Apple TV and I'll bring some Sonos speakers in and we'll get the Sonos speakers going and, you know, just do that kind of stuff, which I think is really beneficial in the, in the home environments. But mainly we're just there to answer everybody's questions and hang out and interact with the community. So that's what we're there for. Uh, we will do a live stream next week. I think the following week is uh, Thanksgiving in the U.S. So we will not be doing one then because I want everybody to take time and enjoy time with their family, hang out, do that kind of thing. So hopefully everybody's got big plans, big, fun, exciting stuff, and all that stuff is going on. So, uh, Brian, you can argue with me all you want. We'll have this argument until they stick both of us in the ground, but I'm not, I'm not doing it on stream. We're not gonna, we're not gonna air our dirty laundry in public. <laughs> so, all right, let's do this. So who loves smart zone? I know everybody does. So we're gonna continue with smart zone a little bit. Today, not a little bit, the whole bit. Oh, I can't use my stream deck. I keep trying to do that. Uh, this is what we're gonna cover. Man, my whole thing is broken. Like the cuts aren't moving. Let me try something real quick. You're gonna have to watch me fumble with this for a minute. Oops, that's the wrong one. There we go. Okay, bear with me. It's one of those days. So we're gonna do smart zone. So I wanna kind of go into and talk about a couple things. One, I'm gonna do an AP patch. So AP patches are different than performing an actual patch to smart zones. So, you know, there's a multitude of reasons to do that. There could be defects, there could be driver support issues, things like that. Uh, we're gonna cover that because I wanna make sure you have that information and mainly just show you how to do it. I mean, the whole intent is the how-to piece of it, right? Uh, and then we're gonna go into, and I'm gonna create some zones and we're gonna kind of look at you know, why are we doing this? How does it really function? What's the use case? Uh, we'll, we'll go through that. We're not going to do domains. Um, Brian and I talked about this this morning. I think the one thing where people can tend to cross the two up a little bit is when it comes to zones, they have one function, but domains don't. So domains is more of an administration function. So you wanna have separate administrators with separate access things like that, that's where your domains come in. Um, zones, we're gonna look at that from a more realistic approach. Uh, we'll be, you know, the Matt Hotel and we'll build out those zones and what they look like and, and functionally building those things out. So we'll go ahead and do that piece of it. Uh, we might even do it from a school district perspective because I think there's a little bit more granular ways we can do that that showcase more of the functionality of smart zones. So we'll kind of go through and do that. Um, and then we'll build some policies. So I want to, you know, we'll do some URL filtering. We'll do some uh, application control, things like that. Um, yeah, and just kind of go through and, and have at it. And I'll show you how to do all that. I don't expect to have um, any of the, the classic whoopsies that we've had in the past. I've, I've kind of gone through and vetted all of this out. 
Um, it works. Oh, and the other thing is we will do DPSK, but we'll do DPSK solely contained within smart zones. We're not going to get into doing that on radius yet. Um, because on the Twitch live stream, when all my hardware shows up and we do the big unboxing and build, we'll do that then. And I need that hardware before we can get radius running. So that's why we're kind of doing this in that, in that approach, but it'll probably be one of the first streams in December, I'm guessing. Uh, cause I don't think I'll have everything here by next week, but I guess we'll see. So, okay. So poking around at smart zone, we need it. We need a patch for access points and. To do that, you need to be on the Ruckus support portal. And once once in the support portal, we're just going to go to downloads. Okay. And I'm trying to remember if I did this for Smart Zone or if I did this for... So don't forget, when you go to the product, you have to then hit downloads. Otherwise, you will end up like me and you'll fumble around wondering why you can't find it. Um... Smart zone AP patch for post 521 GA refresh. So this is it here. This is what you would download. And the main thing is, is I want to pull the, the release notes up because I want to see what's in here, right? Oh, good. It did pull it. Okay. So I just want to get kind of a highlight of what this is doing, what it's fixing, what access points it's supporting, uh, that kind of thing. So of course we have the supported model table. Always review this stuff. You can save yourself a call from support or to support. And you can save yourself from bricking a device, which I don't want you to do because that's always painful. Um, but it'll show you what's resolved. I mean, this is this is not mind blowing information here, but um, it'll give you an at least information on each ER that's resolved. And usually these are it's not a long list of them. Sometimes it can be, but it's here. So I've already downloaded this patch. I already have it on my machine. So to do this, I simply just want to go in here into smart zone, go to administration, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to go to upgrade and then you just go to AP patch. Now this will show you, this is the nice thing on this, on this page right here. We know our controller version. We know our control plane software version and we know what AP firmware version is running. So we have all that. So we know based on this information, oops, let's go back that this version is 1017, right? So that, that piece we have, so this is a patch and an upgrade. So we're going to go ahead and patch it. So you just go to the AP patch button or tab, hit browse. We'll go to downloads. We have the patch right there. We'll open it up and then we'll just hit upload. Okay. You know how my luck tends to be with these things. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll go ahead and let that thing upload. Um, all right. So there it is. We have it. So now all we have to do is just say apply patch. Uh, it's going to log us out at the, after the patch is applied, but that's fine. We have <clears throat> an R730 attached, which is supported. It tells us, so we're going to go ahead and apply the patch. Now, the one thing I don't know, and we're going to find this out together. I'm sure some of you watching are like, you dummy. That's exactly how this works. I don't know if we apply this patch and we need to go manually touch each access point or a smart zone is going to say, all right, boys, we got a new patch. Let's let's throw this out there. Yeah, see, Mark, that's what I was just wondering. We're going to find out live right here together because I don't know the answer to that. I didn't I didn't want to test this beforehand because I couldn't roll the AP back. And then, yeah, see, I got logged out. So I, I didn't have the ability to roll the AP back and then do this again. So I thought, well, we'll just do it live and then it's still there and we'll know. So we'll go to APs. And of course, this is not a large deployment yet. I will be adding access points as we go. Um, but as we look at this guy, it's running 521.698. So I wonder. Uh. Okay, well, I don't need any of that stuff. I need to... Well, let's look at something first. So let's go back to administration. Let's go to upgrade. AP firmware version. Okay. AP patch history, that's there. 
<clears throat> and go to the right zone. Pick this guy. I thought there was a way to trigger... I feel like I'm in the wrong place. Well, it's not going to be in there. Yeah, I thought I could just do drop down and upgrade, but I would need an upgrade option here, and I don't have one. Unless I'm not seeing it. Am I not seeing something and I should? Well, let's go to events. Uh, oh, see, that's why I love you guys. You're the best. Select zone, then more. Aha! Change AP firmware. Thank you. Upgrade to. <clears throat> see, when I do YouTube videos that we put up, <clears throat> you can see how much I have to edit because <laughs> I have to poke around in here all the time. So there we go. Okay. So now if we go to events and alarms, I should have an event eventually that pops up that says it's going to upgrade it. That was completed. Yeah. Boom. Boom shaka. Boop, boop. All right. Where's this at? Connected, new config. Yep, exactly, James. You need to make sure that your APs in there are part of that patch. And look, I mean, we have to be completely open and honest about this. And we look at it, we know that as our networks build out and grow, we're going to have a multitude of different access points. So that's where your zones really kind of come into play. Depending on the deployment, you could have one zone where it's just a certain type of AP model that's supported. And you could have another type of zone where you are bringing in newer APs that are supported, depending on what you're doing with it. that At a smaller scale, that makes sense to me. At a super large scale, that might not. And what I mean by that is this zone here, I, I'm actually going to delete this entire zone because I don't want it anymore. We are going to create a zone... Oh, see, there it goes. It's flagged. So that means it's about to start pushing software to it. Um, and it should tell me in events. Yeah, heartbeat loss. So it, it already pushed it. So it's running. So when we look at this, let's look at this from a school district perspective. Okay. I'm going to build out a Wi-Fi network within not only the school itself, the classrooms, the hallways, but I'm gonna have an office where administrators work. I'm gonna have a lounge where teachers are. I'm gonna have administration buildings that need to exist. So <clears throat> let's look at this from this perspective, okay? We wanna look at and create three different zones because we're gonna apply three different policies to those zones, okay? Zone number one is gonna be students is what's gonna be our targeted client in there. So we're gonna look at common areas, okay? The lobby, the classrooms, the hallways. And then we're going to have, actually, we'll just look at two zones and, and it'll make sense because we have two APs. We can make it work pretty slick. The second zone is going to be faculty, administrators, things like that. So we'll have our front office. We'll have the lounge. We'll have things like that. The administration building. Those will be in different zones because we, when we build the policies out, we essentially want to be able to sit down and restrict certain things for some people, but not for others. So we kind of want to separate that. Um, and the example I'm going to use today is in the student areas, we're going to block Netflix. Okay. I don't want students sitting at their desk watching vampire diaries or whatever my daughter watches on repeat during class. So we're going to, we're going to filter that stuff out. Now the faculty in their areas, you know, teachers are teaching. They're probably not watching Netflix. If it's lunchtime and they go into the, the lounge area to eat lunch and they want to pop their phone open and watch half an, F, blah, half an episode of something, then go for it. I don't think we need to restrict that. Adults are adults. We can we can not worry about that so much, right? And this really comes down to and depends on how you want to manage it, but those are your options with it. 
So that's the main thing. We want to look at it from a use case perspective, right? How does this make sense? Ugh. Okay. So let's build one. So first thing we're going to do, we're just going to create a new zone. All right. And the first zone is going to be, we're just going to call it students. That way we know we can keep it clear. Okay. Uh, Uh, what did I call it? Um, student area. And I'll just use this in here. Obviously, this is safe to use because it's can, included in there. You can add, you know, GPS coordinates if you want to. We can do an override of the admin login if we need to. I'm going to use the same thing we have now. Okay, system defined <clears throat> for the time. We're going to do V4 only. We can do historical connection failures if we want. Um, the the DP zone affinity profile. This one, I don't, I'm going to be dead honest with you. I don't know a lot about this one. I know that our training material covers it, but for this example, we don't really need to worry about it anyways. Um, our tunnel encryption, this isn't federal space, right? We're not, we're not sharing uh, country secrets and um, citizen data. I probably shouldn't say that out loud, but we, we can just use 128 encryption on that. That's fine. Uh, mesh networking. If we were going to do that, we could turn that on. Uh, yeah, V6 is optional in 521. So it is an option. You can do it. You can do V4 only, V6 only, or dual. Um, I would, if it were me and I was doing this, I, I'm a pretty big proponent of IPv6. <clears throat> Ask James and Mark. They've, I've, I've, beat that horse to death. Nuno, thanks for joining. Welcome. I've probably pummeled that horse to the point where it's just, it can't be pummeled anymore, but I'm, I'm a proponent of it because I think that the faster we get in front of it and we start to deploy V6, that's where we really kind of want to have that stuff at. Um, our port requirements for V6. So Toasty, you've, I've got to check on that. It should be. Uh, because I know that they put all the port requirements in there for V4. If it's not, I'm going to make a note right now to make sure that if it's not, that we do have V6 in there uh, because it should be. And Mark or James might know, they probably have looked at that document more recently than I have. Um, v -Z V6 port. If, if I can, Toasty, if you come back tonight, because we're going to... I do a mirrored stream of this tonight at 6.30 Mountain. If I can get that answer before then, I'll give it to you. So it'll be there. If not, it'll be in the recording. You can go back and check it. Um, but yeah, I'm fairly sure they are. I'm just not 100%. But yeah, V6, I think if we have the opportunity to start rolling that out, and I know providers like Charter are doing that, why not? I mean, turn the functionality on now. That way, when you're... You're not chasing your tail later trying to build this stuff out. And we've done V6 streams on the ICX itself. And we talked about the slash 126s and, you know, how there's an any cast address buried in there and things like that. So we have all of that information. If it were me doing this in my lab environment that I have, I would probably turn this on and enable it. Okay. And and keep in mind, this is mainly for management, right? That's That's where those pieces are. So, okay. Uh, channelization, I think I usually leave this default. If you, you know, assuming you're going in and doing a full on site survey, which you should be doing, um, you can toy with this a little bit. Uh, but for just for this general purpose, we're going to leave it pretty straightforward. Okay. Syslog options. A lot of this stuff we will, we will tie in later. So like I said, when I get hardware here, I can spin a, a Linux VM up. I can go in, build a syslog server, syslog everything out to it. Central syslog management is a great thing to have. Um, we can get some SNMP stuff going in there. I'm not a huge fan of using Zabbix, but we can do things like that if we need to do some SNMP testing, but we'll do that later down the road. Okay, advanced options is always where if you need VLANs in here and things like that, we can do that. Again, until I get some of this stuff going, I don't have the ability to do this yet, but in the future we will. All right, so we've got our student zone built. So I'm happy with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create our faculty zone. And I want to make sure that our teachers have faculty zone default. Um, I don't 
I think there's anything else we really need to put in here. I get, you know, I guess I don't follow. Aerie instead of Aries. If you're going to start dropping horoscope stuff in here, we're going to have to chat, buddy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, unless there's a typo in here somewhere I didn't see. Okay. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Is this, this is a group. What's going on here? Add. Oh, no, no, no. I'm good. Okay. Faculty. Oh, that's really weird. It dropped me all the way down to the bottom. That's why I was confused. Which is not hard for me. And it's in the same location, so. Okay. We left pretty much everything else alone in here, so I think we're good. Happy? Happy. All right, cool. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to go in and rename this AP. And I'm going to rename it to, I should probably close that. I'm going to rename this to, what should we call it? Let's call it, students. And this one we're going to rename to, I'm going to tell you a secret that AP I just renamed. I don't know whose it is and what it's doing. So I'm going to have to track it down after we're done and reset it, but it's been attached to my, my smart zone forever and I can't get rid of it. So I thought, well, I'm just going to use it. So once Jack calls me and says, I need that AP back, we'll worry about it then. <laughs> okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take students and we're going to move it to our student zone. Yes, I am sure. Okay, now this one, I'm going to move to our faculty zone, which I bet you could have guessed that. There we go. So now if I go to faculty, I have that one there. If I go to students, I have that one there. So we dropped our APs in our zone. So now we can start to do different things with them, uh, mainly so wireless lands. I'm going to delete these. So speaking, my dad just texted me and here's, here's something you could think about too. And I know some folks internally do this because smart zone is really that powerful. Another thing you could always think about too, with this is I have an access point installed in my parents' house. I also have an access point installed in my sister and brother-in-law's house. I could use smart zone because they could SSH tunnel those APs back into this controller. I could create those zones, mom and dad's house, Kim and Charles house, my house, all of that could be separated. They could then, using domains, go in. I could have them go in and manage that stuff on their own. If they wanted to go in and create a WLAN, not that they would or want to, um, but they would have that freedom and that ability to do that. So that's another way you could manage these zones too, but also understand how the domains come into it. So I could create those, break them out that way. Oh, Nuno, no, I got you, student Aries. <laughs> well, now you've got me all panicked, so I've got to go fix it. See what you're doing to me? So I did the I did the horoscope thing, not you. So I've got to eat crow on that one. You know what? For our latest subscriber, I will fix that absolutely. All right. But that's just to kind of give you an idea of that. That way they have their zone, their WLAN is there. You know, it just makes sense. And then you're set. So that's that's how you would differentiate that differentiate that stuff because one of the things that Brian and I did talk about is how there is at times some confusion over zones versus domains um, which I get because in my mind I would think okay my house would be one domain my parents house would be another domain but no it's a zone and then you can do different things with those zones all right so we have wireless LAN so I'm going to create one wireless LAN which is going to be for our students 
Um, well, we're going to call this Ruckus High Students. <laughs> so we'll put it in the student zone. Uh, we're not worried about that. So we're going to... This one we're probably going to just leave open. The faculty one we're going to do some different stuff with. So this one we'll just leave it open. Uh, we're not going to use any type of authentication for it. We'll leave it wide open for them. So it'll function much like a guest network. You probably wouldn't do this. Students would have credentials that we would use with it. Um, or actually, you know what? We'll do WPA mixed. We'll go ahead and give it a passphrase. And we'll just give it a passphrase of that. Okay. We're not going to do PSK yet. We'll do that for the faculty and in that faculty WLAN. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. Okay. So we've got that built. Um, everything's good there. I think we look good. So we have it. They have their encryption. They're all set. Okay. Okay. Now we need to create one more for the faculty. And we'll do ruckus high faculty. And it's in the faculty zone. And this one, we're going to do WPA mixed again. I'm going to give it a passphrase. Now, the one thing that we're going to do with this is we're also going to incorporate how we could bring in guests, right? So if we have a meeting where somebody's coming in to meet with our IT staff for a week and they need to come in and do some stuff, we're going to give them some DPSK stuff that they can attach to the network and use. Um, and then they won't necessarily have to worry about it. And I'll show you how to build all that. We're going to do it at a really small scale, but we're going to build it in here so that it's there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. We've got that built. I meant to charge my iPad so I could attach it to this thing, and I didn't. So let me find... Let me grab a phone. Hang on. All right, so I'm going to be... A student today so I'm gonna attach no oh, be actually I'm gonna do the faculty one not that there's really much difference to it but I'm gonna do that so that we just have a client attached and then when we do the DPSK one I'll show you that as well okay uh, ruckus high faculty Okay, we're attached. We've got a client. My handy little iPhone right there. So, okay. Now let's look at policies. Okay, so the the main place where we're really going to focus on the policies for just for example's sake, and so that we don't end up running this thing for five hours and boring you to death, is we're gonna look. We're gonna focus this on the student network. Um, oops, I just went to the wrong place. So we're not going to worry about L two L three access control right now. We can go into that. So one thing you can do is. Let's say I have a student that has violated their internet privileges and we know who it is. Uh, we could go in and create this and we could essentially find their MAC address and we could just block that station from joining. Um, and that goes throughout the entire zone, WLAN, everything. So it doesn't matter where they're at in the building, they're not gonna be able to attach, okay? But we're not gonna, we're not gonna dig into that a whole lot right now. It's there, it's pretty straightforward. I can show you if you guys want. Um, but we're going to just kind of essentially focus on this piece right now. So application control. When you look at your application policy, I'm going to go in and create one. And we're going to call it um, student filters. Eh. App block. That way, because I'm going to have to differentiate these later. Then I'm going to create one. So we have denial rules, right? System defined applications all. Let's go to audio video. And then we can go in here. We could say all, so we don't want them streaming anything. We don't want them pulling music. We don't want them pulling anything pretty broad. It might cause more issues than it's worth trying to fix. Um, but for now, we're just going to say, all right, Netflix, you're out. You can't be on. Okay, so we've turned that off. Now, the nice thing about this is when you build your student app block, you can go in and later on, if you're like, oh crap, these kids are using um, some social media platform, right? Or an instant messenger or whatever it might be. You can go in and terminate this stuff the way that you want. So you can do system defined or user defined. 
And then I can go in and either create, I can create an application, which would mean I'm going to take a destination IP and block it with its mask. And I'm also going to identify the ports. So you may end up, as you know, having to go in and create a large uh, piece of this so that you can block a, one application, but it takes a lot of rules to do it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it gives you a lot of granularity and ability to do that. So if I look at instant messaging, I wonder what's, what are my options in here? I didn't look at this yesterday. Holy Moses. AOL Instant Messenger is still there and it's been retired. <laughs> so we can actually block that if we want. But things like BitTorrent, you know, you might want to block that kind of stuff. WebEx, you would probably wouldn't. Discord, things like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here, but you could take it and pick and choose and block whatever you want. So just for fun, we'll block AOL Instant Messenger too. Okay. You can send the logs. So if this happens, you can log it so you'll know how much it's getting hit. Uh, you can also send it to your remote syslog if you need to. We don't have one built yet, so we're not going to. Okay. All right, so we have an app block built. Now we have URL filtering that we need to look at. So if I go into profiles and I look at this and create, so the one thing I don't know is, I don't, I'm not sure if I have licensing on the smart zone for it. So, um, adult block. Okay. So we want no adult content, right? Boom, done. Okay. And then you can also build a device policy in here. This gets pretty granular. So if you need to send an individual policy to, um, and this is where it gets a little, so we're going to do this. We're going to say no gaming. That'll make sense in a second. I'm going to create it. Description, um, console deny, and we're going to say block it. Okay. Device type, gaming. And then we're going to go in here and say, okay, I'm going to block all of these. So if somebody brings in their Nintendo Switch or... Uh, I don't uh, a PSP or things like that. They they won't attach to the network at all. Um, only Mac or account as well. Oh, you mean in the uh, access control? I think you mean the access control. I'll, I'll go into it in a second, and you'll see because you can do. Layer two, layer three blocking, that's where you're gonna filter either a MAC address or you're gonna filter um, an IP address. If you're looking at account blocking, that's where DPSK would come in, where you have individuals with their own pre-shared key, and then you can just terminate those where you need to. Um, one thing I will mention is, um, is it in our, I don't think it's in our how-to hub, I think it's in our general playlist, but James put together an awesome video on DPSK and configuring it in here. And if you find that video, it's, it's well worth watching. He does a great job of it. Um, so it's, it's good to look at. So Nuno, give me a little clarity on that question. And I'll absolutely answer it for you. But anyways, you can block this. The other thing I thought about too, when I was looking, this is a, I could go in and say um, IOT block. And I want to block these because if somebody were to bring in, let's say somebody's coming in and doing some type of lecture, you could take IOT devices and you could say, you know, like nest cameras or things like that. We want those blocked. So you could block all of those. Um, also home AV equipment, Apple TVs, uh, Bose speakers, Sono speakers, things like that. You could block those as well. So that way you don't have, you know, disruption things going on. So, you know, you can include that stuff in there as well. Okay. All right. But for gaming right now, I think we're good. We'll go ahead and block that. Now we're going to apply this to the student's zone and we're just going to kind of leave um, uh, students. We're going to leave the, the faculty alone. That's where we're going to do our DPSK here in a minute. Okay. Okay. So here we are. We're going to go down to, I think it's in advanced options. I'm in the wrong spot. I already know that. James is twitching over there going, no, click over there, dummy, you're in the wrong place. And I am in the wrong place, hold on. Uh, is it? Uh, 
I just saw this yesterday. Why I might get all backwards and confused again. I'm an idiot. It's in the W land. <laughs> All right, configure this. Group is fine. Um, options. Firewall options. Firewall profile. All right, here we go. So when you do WLAN specific or application policy, we're gonna select the student app block for our URL filtering policy. I'm not gonna test any of this stuff, by the way, just cause I don't, I don't think that's appropriate, but plus I didn't bring my switch, so I can't, I can't test it anyways. Yeah, I have a switch, I'm a nerd, what's it to you? Um, and then the other thing that's really cool about this, um, Oh yeah, so no, no, you're right. So you would have to go in and identify that student's devices at that point, right? Um, and there's ways to manage that down to make it a little bit simpler, especially with something like DPSK. Um, but yeah, you would have to isolate each individual device and then block them. So yeah, you could do that. Now the challenge comes in, if the student comes in and they need their laptop to be online for classwork, then that's a little bit more of a challenge there, right? So it, it's kind of one of those things, but the functionality is there and how you want to manage it is probably a case by case basis anyway. So you could do it in a multitude of ways. All right, so the other cool thing is the rate limiting and I, and I like this. So if we're doing uplink rate limiting, I'm going to say we're going to limit you to 10 megasecond. And if you're doing down, we're going to give you 25, which is more than enough way more than enough, right? Uh, but we'll just kind of throttle each individual client at that at that clip right there, um, and then they'll be good. Now keep in mind, that throttling is gonna be from the client to the AP. You're also going to need to have some kind of, um, yeah, you know, blocking the account would be much more efficient. Yeah. And, I, and it was probably a terrible use case for me to use in that example, um, but it was just the example of, you know, I've got a rogue device, I don't know what it is, block the Mac of it, and then it can't attach anymore. So yeah, you could do both. Yep, absolutely. Especially if like on the faculty side, if they were using LDAP to authenticate through everything, their account would be disabled, so their devices become basically ineffective and unable to connect to the network anyways at that point. I think a rogue device is maybe a better use case for that. Okay, um, so anyway, with, with this rate limiting, that's gonna be from client to AP, so I'm only gonna get so much um, of a pipe with that airtime. Now from the AP out, uh, I'm not limiting anything there. So in, within my wired network, my L2, L3 network, then that's where I would have to do some traffic shaping stuff. And I think as we kind of go through this further and further, we'll, we'll start to build some of that stuff in so we can see the end-to-end -end solution. But for right now within here, that's kind of where we're at. And honestly, I mean, a lot of this stuff, you're, I don't know how much of this network is probably self-managed within the school. I mean, once you go out to the internet, you can't help that. But at least it's throttled up and down between the client and the AP. So they're not chewing up everything. Okay. All right, perfect. So we've got this built. This looks good. I'm pretty happy with it. So we say, okay. Okay, so our students are now in that position. Now let's say... Ruckus education is going to come in. We've got three, three people coming in and they're going to sit down and they're going to work with the IT faculty on some different things, you know, just working with smart zone, doing some training. You know, we got a couple PS guys that come in, they're going to do some different work here and there. So we need to look at what kind of access these guys need, right? For the, for the educators, for the trainers, we're just going to focus on trainers. They're going to come in, they're going to need access to the internet, and that's pretty much it. We're not going to be giving them wide blown access to everything. So what you would end up doing is going down here to clients. Okay. And then you're going to go down here to DPSK. Okay. And we're going to go to faculty. And what I want to do is I want to generate DPSKs. And basically what I'm going to do is if there's Oh, I don't have a enabled WLAN. Hold on. Oh. Faculty. 
See, I even watched James' video before I did this, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's what you do, and I knew I was going to screw it up on the stream anyways. So DPSK, we're going to do internal, and what this means is internal means smart zone itself is going to handle the dynamic pre-shared keys. If you did external, that would mean something like radius is going to handle those, and we're... <laughs> James, you're funny. Um, don't sell yourself short. So external would radius or something of the sort would be doing that you bet nuno so for here we're just doing internal only um, you can change a dpsk length i this is an example obviously depending on your environment you're going to want to tweak and massage this a little bit in terms of how you're doing it for us we're going to make it simple and we're going to require 12 characters for for that passphrase okay now keep in mind we have a passphrase on our wlan so it's still there. The key to it is, is make it, I would personally, if you're trying to keep it secure in that way, I would make it long, use a lot of different character types, and I would make it complicated because you don't want that, that passphrase or that key to be used to join the network. You want the DPSK piece to be there and I'll show you why, okay? Um, type, we're gonna do numbers only because I wanna make it easy for these guys to type this stuff in. I always think about mobile friendly. You can do keyboard friendly, you can do numbers only, you can do it secure where there's gonna be a whole mixture in there. Um, yep, James is right, that passphrase is never gonna be used. So the more complicated you make it, the better off you are. It's not in use, right? Okay, um, now the expiration. So let's say the staff or the, the visitors that I have coming in, they're gonna be here for one week. So I'm gonna set this to expire in one week but I'm gonna have it expire from its first time of use. So I could set this up two weeks in advance, but it's not gonna, the clock doesn't start ticking until somebody comes in and actually attaches using that unique username and password, okay? Okay, so we've got it, it's there, it's set. We're using 12 characters, we're using numbers only. We have plenty of options there. Okay, so let's go back to dynamic PSK. And I'm gonna go back to faculty and I'm gonna do generate DPSK, and we're gonna do it under this WLAN, the Ruckus High faculty. Number, we've got three people coming in, so I need three of them, okay? Uh, the username prefix, so... <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at Ruckus. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what this does afterwards. We can tweak this as we need, as we need to, okay? Uh, user role, we're not going to give them a user role. They don't, they don't need one. So they just need access to the wireless network. Okay. VLAN ID, we don't have anything special. You can do a group DPSK. Um, so it would generate all of them for one and they're all the same, but we'll just do it individual and give them each their own. Okay. All right. So we're going to generate it. The three dynamic PSKs were successfully created and we can download this and I'm just going to open an Excel so you can see it. Now, the nice thing about this is we have it. We can tweak this however we want. Um, it shows us the usernames. It shows us the WLAN that they're gonna connect to, and then it shows us the passphrase. So these are the passwords that they're gonna use to connect. Now, cancel that. This is pretty cool. I wanna tweak this. So I have three different users. I'm gonna tweak this and I'm gonna say Ruckus3 and say, okay, Ruckus2, I'm gonna say, okay, and then numero uno, right there, okay. So this changes um, what I had in the spreadsheet, but that's fine. We know what the passcodes are, we can tweak that. So I would basically go into this and just say, all right, dude, you're Ruckus1, Ruckus2, Ruckus three, I could take these important pieces out, pull it out, connect it, we're done. Okay. Now, how do we test this and make sure it works? Well, simple. I'm going to connect to this network. Did I connect to the faculty network? I think I did, didn't I? Don't. Not right now, go away. Let me make sure. Okay, so it's connected there. I'm going to go ahead and forget that network. And I'm going to connect to it again and see if we can connect to it via the DPSK. 
So we're going to go Ruckus. Oh, where'd my W land go? Oh, there it is. This is not the Grr. Oops, I need W wins. Stand by. You know what's funny is my ruckus high students. Oh, I think it's because it's on the other side of the building, so I can't get to it. So I'm glad I did this the way I did, because I can't actually reach that other access point to connect to it. So okay. So we've done DPSK, we've done the zones, we created application policies so we can block certain traffic if we need to. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's it. So we're going to do a repeat cover of this tonight. So we'll do the same thing. Uh, we'll go through it. Um, there was, so toasty IOU, something about V6 port requirements. I'll dig through the release notes on 521. Actually, since we're sitting here and I've got a few minutes, let's go see if we can find it. So 521 GA release notes. Here, IPv6. Oh, I don't want release notes. I want the install guide. Hold on. Is it the admin guide? Maybe it is. Try this. Oh boy, this is going to take a while to find it that way. Um, whoa. Firewall profile. That's absolutely not what I was looking for. Okay. Uncle. <laughs> Let's see if I can find the right document for it. I thought it was like the getting started guide it was called or something. Okay, well... Toasty, I owe you an answer. I'll find the document and get it for you. Oh, here we go. Quick setup guide. Maybe that's it. Okay, that's probably not it. <laughs> then if it's not in the quick setup guide, there was another one. It was the getting started guide.
I don't want this HT book item. There we go. Ooh, I found it. Whoa. Or did I? Oh, that's for GCE. Preparation. It's in one of these tables. I know, because we pulled it before. Oh, boy. Butthead. Using the wizard. Appointment. Upgrade. All right, Toasty, I owe you an answer. I'll track it down tonight. I know it's in one of these documents. I just, I don't, you guys don't need to sit here and watch me fumble with this. So don't forget tonight at 6.30 p.m. Mountain, I'll be back here. And it's going to be pretty funny because my kids are going to work with a, a boxing trainer tonight for fun and exercise. And I've warned them that they're going to get their butts flat kicked and they don't believe me. So hopefully I come back with a good story where they're a little red faced and sweaty. <laughs> so thanks everybody. We'll, uh, we'll see you tonight. <laughs>